Our next speakers are uh, Manu Shama from Infinity Aerospace and Laura Colville from CASIS. They're here to share an exciting project CASIS is developing that involves students sending experiments through the station. Manu and I are going to both present. My name is Laura Colville, and I work with the CASES Education Department. Um, Manu is the co-founder of Infinity Aerospace. So we have an excited, uh, exciting pilot program that we want to discuss with you today. Okay. All right. So first of all, um, those of you that don't know, I'm sure everyone in this room does, a little bit of background on the International Space Station. Um, of course, CASES is managing the U.S. <laughs> National Laboratory and we support uh, non-exploration R&D. And of course, um, a lot of our mission is also to support STEM education. So uh, the pilot program that we're gonna launch in the Houston area, we'll be covering that today. So um, we're gonna be calling it the National Design Challenge. And the reason why is our vision is to have this present in all 50 states. And of course, we have to start somewhere, and we've chosen the Houston area. It's a unique e ecosystem. Um, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, but basically, the, the National Design Challenge is gonna engage educators and students in inquiry-based um, scientific and engineering practices by actually designing and flying experiments on the International Space Station. Um, so students have the opportunity to participate in real-time research, and this will align really nicely with the new um, standards that are coming out nationwide, which include engineering standards. So this is really a hands-on project-based learning experience for students. So as I mentioned, the initial pilot program will be in Houston, Texas. We've already chosen the three schools. Um, they're on board with us, and we <coughs> are actually going to be kicking off the pilot program next month in Houston on August 5th and 6th. So once we iron out all the bugs in our pilot program, it'll serve as our proof of concept, and we'd like to duplicate that in other areas of the country involving um, different cities and different ecosystems, and eventually we get this on a national level where we have all 50 states involved. So we actually get to our piece of flight hardware, and I'm gonna um, just kind of touch the surface of it because Manu is actually gonna get further into it because he's actually the developer of this hardware. Um, this is a 1U CubeSat form factor. Uh, it actually comes in different sizes, but for our purpose for this pilot program, we're using the, the 1U size. It's actually, the great thing about this Lab is it actually includes um, an Arduino microprocessor. And for those of you that know anything about, anyone in the room, just out of curiosity, raise the, your hand. Does anyone know about Arduino or have used Arduino before? Okay, so we, don't, we certainly have some folks out there that aren't novices. Um, the great thing about this, it's, it's open source. So anyone can get this code, download it off the internet, um, and you can really teach this Arduino technology to anyone. And so the microprocessor, the great thing about it is it uses this plug and play <coughs> sensors. Um, and the reason that's ideal is that it reduces crew time. So now we can run experiments where we're collecting data. Um, we are using automation and data collection and it, it's getting downloaded to here on Earth. So that's, uh, Manu has, actually, is that a 1U or a 2U? Oh, that's a 2U. 2U. So we'll, we'll do a little show and tell, I'll let Manu get to that. So we have some pictures here. Actually, the one on your left side is actually in a nano lab that was developed by um, NanoRax and they're one of our implementation partners, we'll get to that. So that's a, a basic plant experiment. And then the one on the uh, right-hand side is actually a, a fluids experiment. So there's a lot of different um, research areas that can be covered. And the great thing about it is the miniaturization of experimentation really allows um, folks to really take this in any direction they want to and fit it into any curriculum in the school system. So some of the logistics. Um, we're gonna be partnering with Infinity Aerospace. They're our hardware developer. And Nanorax is our payload integrator, and that's why we're gonna be getting these experiments up to the International Space Station. Um, the Arja Labs are small enough, they're gonna be stowed inside existing racks on the space station. And um, as I mentioned, uh, Nanorax is gonna be coordinating all of the payload integration services. So the great thing about this, uh, a lot of the education community out there, um, at least at the K through 12 level, is not used to payload integration and um, we're gonna streamline that for them. So really they're focusing on the design and the engineering portion of it and the science portion of it. And we have folks behind the scenes that are gonna really help them out with the payload integration. So just some um, general ideas for some of the areas of space research. It kind of covers a lot of territory there from biological sciences to material sciences, um, 
fluid, fluid physics. So it really can fit into any school system's curriculum, as we mentioned. The timeline. We've already started, um, we're past the June stage, so we've already selected our schools. We're into the part where we're gonna be offering professional development for our teachers, and this is really key for this program. Uh, most teachers, not all of them, but most teachers may not be familiar with Arduino technology or programming, so it's really um, incumbent upon us to provide that professional development training for teachers, and we have all the players in place, including Infinity Aerospace, um, SparkFun Electronics, they really specialize in the plug and play sensors and also professional development um, for teachers. And another thing that's really important is we actually have a teacher in the Houston area that was part of the NASA Hunch Project um, and has a background as an engineer. So we're, uh, she's gonna be our kind of our project um, manager on the ground in the Houston area and helping out those teachers and acting as a professional development mentor, which is really critical moving forward, not just in the Houston ecosystem, but on all of our uh, ecosystems that we're going to be rolling out this project in is providing the professional development for the teachers so this project is not intimidating for them. So once they develop their projects and they've had all their professional development, um, in the fall we'll be completing the experiments and starting the payload integration process which can probably take up to about six months. And then we anticipate that they'll be flying next spring, probably um, next April or May. And uh, so it, it's really impressive that within one school year this is a really accelerated program initially for the pilot program. Uh, we can get teachers and students designing experiments and then flying them hopefully by the end of the school year. So uh, that's the, the end of my portion. I'm gonna turn it over to Manu and he's really gonna get into the nuts and bolts of the RG Lab because uh, he's a lot more technically savvy than I am. So I'm gonna turn that over to him and pull up his presentation. Thank you, Laura. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Manu. A um, um, little bit of myself, so you kind of get a perspective of where I'm coming from. Um, I have, uh, I'm an aerospace engineer, and I've been designing airplanes and rockets, um, as far as I remember, um, since child. And I, I, went, uh, I went to Embry-Riddle to do my, um, uh, and to get an engineering degree. Uh, in the meantime, while doing lots of cool stuff, uh, I started a company, and uh, um, re, you know, after I think in junior year we raised some money and uh, I was uh, off, I uh, was almost deciding to drop school, which I did after getting the degree. Uh, I was in grad school and dropped the school and, uh, and continued to um, make my dream come true for the first company. Um, after that I moved to Silicon Valley um, where I knew that all the big things, all the big companies really form in this valley. And uh, I went to Singularity University and uh, worked with Peter Diamandis and uh, uh, had a great pleasure of uh, you know, forming new ideas and, and, and doing some space geeky stuff with him. Um, and I finally got accepted in Stanford to do graduate degree again, so, which I did. Uh, uh, anyway, so that's kind of my background. Um, anyone has Twitter accounts? No? Okay, well, so. It's a good, great time to have a Twitter account because that's a hashtag for Infinity Aerospace, Makers in Space, and RD Lab. So um, I had been waiting for this day for a long time. <coughs> now, in fact, I remember that I've been waiting for this day in front of you guys uh, for over four years. It's precisely the day when I realized that I want to do a space experiment in my college in, 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 in freshman year. And I, and I came to know that to finish a CubeSat experiment and actually see it in space, it will be longer than my time in college. I would never see a project see to fruition uh, in, in my college career. And I think that was so disappointing to me because when, as, as a kid, you know, you are very fascinated about doing things and really making seeing things happen. And, and when you go talk about space, then everything really comes down. Like, well, there's nothing you really can't, can do. You can't really launch, launch things in space that quickly. So, um, and that really <coughs> evolved, this, uh, this problem really evolved into formation of Infinity Aerospace. So, before I start things, I really want to get uh, on a philosophical not, note. This is a French Revolution painting. Um, you know, all the revolutions start with really bad things happening. There's a bad king, there's a bad government, there's you know, some really bad guys doing bad things. Um, and in today's world, uh, bad things happen in design, bad things happen in processes and the way things are done. 
And I believe space is exactly like that today. Um, while we are making, we all are making amazing efforts, we've been learning about new things that are happening, still accessing space is really hard. It is not still in the hands of everyone, not in the hands of every student. Why there aren't hundreds and thousands of students doing things in space today? Because it's still hard. So, w being in college, you know, seeing um, <laughs> Don doing experiments, I used to come with ideas like, geez, like, what if he did like, a little different thing and uh, what would the experiment come out to be like? And there was no way for me to really do an experiment or really tweak things and do it myself. And certainly was true for everyone in, in, in across the globe. So there's three things I want to get away, uh, get, get you guys uh, away from this presentation. Um, and I will definitely go in, in the technical side of our uh, RD lab. The first thing essentially is, um, as we talk about RD lab. So RD lab is a NanoRex compliant and certified Arduino based nano lab. This thing essentially is a platform for you to design space experiments. This thing actually takes away most of your work to actually design repetitive tasks and actually concentrate on science or doing cool stuff. Um, because most of the people, when you design space experiments, you end up designing this thing over and over again. And that is a very troublesome process and it takes over months and months to do this thing. So uh, when we launched RD Lab, our goal was to have you guys really concentrate on the things that you are really good at. <coughs> doing science, doing, making things or finding phenomena and making those prototypes and not doing housekeeping work, which everyone tends to do it uh, today without using these platforms. So how it works? Um, the way it really works is you buy an RD Lab off the shelf, it comes as pre-packaged, pre-certified from NASA and compliant with NanoRacks. Um, you create your experiment. By the way, the sensors are off the shelf. It's like $5 sensors you can buy um, uh, from SparkFun uh, and create a space quality experiment. You make, you make your experiments at your home, in your university, or in your classrooms. Um, you FedEx your experiment to us. And depending on your choice of where you would like to launch in suborbital or to ISS, we provide you seamless experience um, and provide you the launch slot with partner company NanoRex and get, uh, launch, the and launch the RD Lab to the space. Now, this whole process, five years ago, used to take many years. Now we can do that in less than nine months, and I think that's breakthrough. Now, b getting on the technical side, adding, you know, we design RD Lab keeping customers in mind, <coughs> and especially students in mind. We believe like when, you, when kids start making experiments or you know, students or scientists or researchers make experiments, they need a very seamless experience uh, in, in creating those experiments. They don't really need to reinvent the wheel over and over again. And we added certain features which were really uh, one of the most important features required for um, all of the people who are doing experiments. First of all, as, uh, adding cameras has never been easier before. Um, you can buy a pretty much GoPro zero, you know, really commercially off the shelf, $300 cameras, really high quality, and it's never been easier. You just plug and play with RD Lab and it works. And it takes your videos and pictures fully autonomously without any, uh, a lot of solutions. You can add servers, actuators, motors, all the, all the major, uh, major of the things you need to uh, do for your experiments, for fluids to material science, all the things very easily. It's all plug and play. Think about Lego Mindstorms. Um, we have full motion sensing and lithium battery charges on board this thing. It looks like an empty box, but this has everything there. And that's something really cool because you don't see these things easily. And that's, like, that's why over 95% of the space is for you to be creative uh, and not to waste the spaces in adding those things differently from different places. It's all integrated in one motherboard. Uh, we already have customers, so this is the uh, first time we sold this RD Lab to JPL. Uh, who would have thought JPL would buy uh, RD Labs? So they're really happy customers, as I like to say. Uh, I think she is really happy because she's using RD Lab and not being in 0G. Um, <laughs> today, RD Lab is serving customers in all space bound vehicles. Uh, people are flying uh, RD Labs in uh, Virgin Galactic, Xcore, ISS, and as, we, uh, as Laura mentioned, um, there's going to be kids flying now uh, RD Labs in ISS as well. 
Second thing. Uh, oops. So you see sensors and training and payload integration. So I think this is an uh, issue with the slide. Uh, essentially, what we provide also is we provide you all the sensors that really re you require to design all these experiments and training. Uh, not this training is not you know you, you you think of traditional training. It's a it's a it's a full spectrum of training. We provide you online resources. We provide you documents. We provide you um, uh, on-site. Uh, our tech team comes to on-site to, pro to train your teachers and kids to really know how to, op to really learn how to operate RD Lab uh, and create very interesting <coughs> experiments. We also provide you payload integration, which is uh, one of the by far most uh, cumbersome process. Uh, how, do you, how do you integrate your experiments with you know, payload uh, flight providers? We provide you all of that. Uh, third thing, right to space. So um, one thing we have also added is like people really don't care about you know just having an RD lab and creating an experiment. They really need a whole end-to-end -end solution. <coughs> so we started providing um, the right to space with our partner Nanorex, and uh, Nanorex has been an incredible company. You all know about it. Um, if you want to go to ISS, if you want to go to uh, low Earth orbit, um, working with Nanorax and us, you can actually get a complete seamless experience from designing, from uh, starting your experiment design to the launch. Seamless. Nothing. Uh, it takes less than nine months. We also provide launch slots in Virgin Galactic and uh, Xcore, um, working, with, work, working with Nanorax as well. So three things I mentioned to you, right? So RD Lab, launch slots, and sensor training payload integration. So you guys get it? Like this is three things I mentioned to you, RD Lab, launch slots, and sensors training and payload integration. Now, these all things are actually in the same package, which is the coolest part. Now for starting at 4995, you can actually get whole space program from RD Lab, from sensors, from training programs, and a launch slot. Um, this prize is for suborbital uh, vehicles, but if you, uh, this whole package goes as well for uh, going to ISS and uh, low Earth orbit at different price. You can go online and find uh, information and talk to me uh, or Nanorax team to get better, deal, uh, better uh, pricing on, on the things. But now, imagine this thing has never been existed a few years back. You can literally start your own space program in your backyard, in your room, uh, in, in your classroom, company, wherever you are, across the globe, no matter, it's, it, it's not confined to a few <coughs> places now. You don't have to um, ask for funding uh, to do these projects. You can actually go uh, to Kickstarter and uh, Indiegogo crowdfunding, crowdsourcing your experiments, and that, has, that is the most amazing part of, of what we've been doing uh, together with Nanorex. Uh, and that's something we really want to change uh, in the way people do science. Um, science no longer is, um, you have to, not, now you don't have to do just experiments in, science, in, in space by seeking funding, you can just do it yourself. And I think we will be able to reduce the price point much lower um, as we go continue. So the other thing I want to focus is, RD Lab el enables people to do both art and science. And that is a, our core mission. Because we believe true commercial um, success of, of utilizing ISS will be encapsulating all the different markets. And you and if you want to fascinate kids, if you want to inspire kids, they need to they should be able to do anything they come with the idea. They have to be open minded. So um, just as you saw some experiment ideas from Space Lab uh, students, these ideas, they cannot they, if you would go in a traditional route, they probably would never get funded. And that's the most amazing part that now with utilizing such uh, resources, you can actually really create Angry Birds games in space or uh, doing really cool and you know, uh, interesting science experiments. And I think that's something we are really going after. So um, as you mentioned, um, we are starting pilot program with CASES and NRX beginning this August, um, providing RD Lab uh, to, to high school students and training high school students and uh, teachers to how to design space experiments and launch them. Um, I'd really like to uh, tell you about the slide. Um, Sylvia, how many of you know about Sylvia? She's an 11-year-old girl. Um, 
she teaches kids how to program Arduino and make robots. And she has over 100,000 views every video. And if a few, five years back, I would design experiments, I would design robots, it would take me months and months. Now these kids are doing it every other week. And that's the power of open source hardware. And that's what we are after. We are creating an open source revolution in space using our Ar Lab, where everyone has access to the programs, everyone has access to the hardware, everyone has access to the, the way people design experiments, and they're free to do whatever they want to do. And that's our vision. And uh, I guess I will end, it, end with this thing. Thank you. Please see the RV lab and pass it around. <laughs>